In this tutorial, I'll be creating a Java web application using Maven. Uh, there are a couple of reasons why I'm doing this. First of all, to see how easy it is to use Maven and set up a whole web application project. And the second thing is the web application gives us an opportunity to explore a couple of concepts, one of them being uh, the scope that we had discussed earlier. And of course, we'll also see a few concepts down the line and uh, a web application is useful to see how those concepts come into play. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing that I need to do, as with any Maven project, in order to set up the code base is to call the arctic pull and generate command. So I'll do that. MVN arctic pull and generate. And it's going to give me this huge list of uh, archetypes that I can choose from. I will choose the web application I see here. See, there are a few web application archetypes. I'm going to choose the J2EE14, which is the Java Enterprise 1.4 version. Uh, this is archetype 269. So just enter the value here 269. Now I can choose a version. Version 4 is fine. Again, the group ID. The artifact ID. Version can be 1.0 snapshot, which is fine. Package will be the same as group ID by default. I can change it if I want, but I'm going to leave it as it is. Yes, everything is fine. Now I have my web app setup. Okay, here's the my web app folder that Maven has created, and inside this is the pom.xml and the source folder. So if I open the pom.xml, here you can see this is again the inputs what we have given. But note here that the packaging is a word this time. This is because we have a web application selected. Earlier we had a simple application which was a, which was a jar, but now since we have a web application it's a war. These uh, other inputs are the same, where it has just taken our inputs and entered the corresponding values. Now the name and URL can be changed. Now the dependencies, just have a look at the dependencies here. They It has dependencies on the Java X dot servlet uh, values. So one is the servlet and one is for the JSP. So these two are the dependencies. So if I'm, if I'm you know, planning to write servlets in my application, so this is the dependency that will help. And if I'm planning to write JSPs, this is the dependency that would help. And of course, we have JUnit again. Uh, this is helpful for uh, running test cases. Now, note that there is one other entry here, which is called the build plugins. So you have a build node. Inside that, you have a plugins node. And one plugin has been defined here, which is uh, the group ID is org.apache.maven.plugins. And the name is Maven Compiler Plugin. Note that we saw in our earlier tutorial that uh, when the compiler showed him an error, it actually said an error from the Maven compiler plugin. So the thing to note here is that the compiler in Maven is actually a plugin. And uh, what is happening here is uh, we are configuring how the compiler plugin should behave. So in, we, are sell, we are telling that the compiler plugin version is 202. And then we have a configuration node for this plugin where we have some configuration values. We're going to have a look at this later, but again, just make a mental note of this. And uh, this is where we have specified configuration for the Maven compiler plugin. Now, the question you might ask is, where was this plugin in our earlier, earlier project? Even that used a Maven compiler, but we had not specified the plugin. The, the thing here is that Maven takes this compiler plugin as a default. Uh, since you're developing Java applications, you would need a compiler. And uh, by default, Maven assumes that you would want to use the compiler plugin. And when you use the MVN compile command, the compiler plugin is the one that's doing the job. Uh, the only reason why you would want to specifically mention this is if you want to change the configuration. That's what's happening over here. We are specifying some configuration values here. And that's the only reason why you would want to add the compiler plugin mentioned in the pom.xml. If you had not entered this, the compiler plugin would still be in play but it would take the defaults. So there's no way you can configure it. 
in order to configure it just make an entry in the form.xml so but again this is something that we're going to look at uh, later just make note that it's there now this is our web application form.xml so we have two dependencies uh, for the uh, servlet and the JSP we have one dependency for JUnit and uh, we have the compiler plugin configuration so now if I compile this I'll just run an MVN let me package this because it's gonna run the other phases anyway okay the error here says that I'm not in the folder where the pom.xml is as you can see, I'm one level up. So let me go to the folder where the pom.xml is. Now I need to run the command here. So here it's downloading all the uh, dependencies that we have mentioned in the pom.xml and it's gonna finish the compilation. So now, I will package. Okay, after downloading all the related uh, components, well, the packaging is done and it is built a war and the war is over here again in the target folder. So if I, if I open the target folder, here you can see my war is ready. Now, all I need to do is drop this into a, you know, a container. I can drop this into Tomcat and then I access it. It should work. Now let's have a look at what is the content of this uh, my web app. We haven't written any code here. We've just issued the archetype colon generate command and this is the default that's there. Now if you look at the Java folder, you will see that there are no classes here. Uh, but if you look at the web app folder, this is where the web content is, you see an index.jsp. Now if you open this, it's a hello world JSP page. So now the web inf has the web.xml and the web.xml has again just the basics it has the session timeout and the welcome file list which will point to the only jsp that's there in the folder right now now let's uh, deploy this war file in tomcat to make sure that everything works fine i happen to have tomcat running here so i'll deploy using the admin console here target and this is the word that we need to add deploy it and let's try accessing that well there you go hello world is printed so our web application is working fine it doesn't really have much but uh, this just goes to show that our uh, configuration is fine and we are set to write code on top of this there are a few things that uh, we will uh, will learn in the later tutorials uh, but i just like to show you that they're there here if you look at the pom.xml you see this uh, for the javax.servlet and the javax.servlet.jsp there's scope called provided and uh, it's there for both these dependencies. JUnit still has a test scope. So this is a new scope that we have seen in this in this kind of a web application. We'll have a look at what scopes are, but uh, so far we've encountered three scopes. One is the test scope, which JUnit always seems to have. One is the compile scope that we wrote, and uh, that's what we use when we are having a dependency, and we want the dependency to be considered during compile time. And we are seeing the third type of scope here, which is the provided scope. So we'll have a look at what these scopes are in the subsequent tutorials.